So I've spent a bit of extra time adding some additional objects to the assembly. If you remember, I've made this room myself, this environment. It doesn't have to be as detailed as this, it could just be a floor and a wall. I've brought in an engine, a little kind of model engine, and that's going to be my focus product for this exercise. And this exercise is about producing renderings using something called Inventor Studio. And we do this to simulate a product that's not real. It's obviously a virtual product, a virtual model in a virtual environment. And to make it real, what we need to do is to capture stills that show things like texture, reflection and shadows. So before we move on and start doing this, I'm just going to make one final change here. The whole time we've been working in Inventor, we've been modeling things in orthographic view or as you can see here, an isometric view. And it doesn't include any kind of perspective. So if we go to the view tab here and we go to orthographic here, we can change it to perspective. You can see that, that skews the room slightly. And what you can see happening is that edges that were previously parallel, like the sides of the floor, are now traveling and getting smaller and closer together as we move into the distance. So we can now move into something called Inventor Studio to capture stills. So to do that, what we have to do is we'll go back to the Assemble tab and we go to Tools and we go to something called Inventor Studio. What you'll see happen is that the tools change significantly and the browser bar is simplified. You can zoom in and you can see the item that we want to focus on. So I'm going to get that into position as best I can. And what we have to do when we do this is imagine ourselves being a photographer in a virtual environment. Imagine where you would stand to take a photo. So I'm going to use the pan tool to slide across. So I've got this engine right in the middle of the shot. I'm going to use the rotate tool as well. So I can pan down. You can also use the arrow keys to do this. So I can use the cursors up, down, left and right to get myself in position. And I want to swing around so I've got the little nitro engine right in the center of the shot and I want to have some interesting stuff in the background. So you can control what you see in various ways. You can also set up cameras that basically remember where you want to have good shots. And if you're a photographer, you call this composing the shot, getting into position and basically controlling what's in the background. You can use the rotate tool in different ways. You can hold on to this tab here at the top, the vertical ones to basically move up and down. You can also hold on to the ring around about the outside to, to tilt over just for a bit of drama. What I would say though is it's quite easy to overdo this and actually spoil the effect. I'm going to zoom in and I think I'm happy with that there. It's just annoyingly moved, so I'll just move back. You can hit the F5 key to do that. There you go. Perfect. So, if we go to this button here, we've got cameras here in the browser bar. I can create a camera from the view if I right click on it. You see a camera appears, camera one, and that's handy because I can now click on that and it will bring me back this particular view that I'm in right now. I could just show you how to set up another camera. I'm just going to rotate around the object. You can see that little symbol there, that is the camera we've just set up. So that'll be a sort of visual representation of um, what we've just set up. I'm going to come down, I'm going to look at the little engine another way now. And you can endlessly play around with where the, your camera is and what view you've got. I think that was quite good there. So again, I'll go to the camera icon, right click, and I'll create a camera from the view. So I've got two cameras, camera one and camera two. And I can click on these and I can basically set the camera to view or I can set the view to the camera, which basically means I move back to where I was standing before. Right. What's very important about this is that we have lighting effects set up and we indeed create our own lighting effect. There are many default lighting effects in Inventor, but in order to gain credit when you're doing your course, you have to show the ability to set up lighting yourself. So if we go to the lighting styles button here, it'll bring up a menu.
I can see that everything's gone dark, so it's basically activated a lighting style that potentially is not very good. So we can go through different lighting styles, and you can see there's bottom lighting, cool color, desktop, and it will change, and you'll get different effects. What you could do is you could pick one that's pretty close to what you're looking for and modify it, but I think it's best to do your own lighting style. So I'm going to press this button here, new lighting style. So I've got this one here called default one that's came up. I'm going to right click in that. I'm just going to rename that. Let's call this demo lighting style. I'm going to open that and you can see I've got three lights in it. I've got this one here, which is like a big sunlight. I've got this one here, which is a kind of directional light, like a spotlight. And I've got this one here, which is like a light bulb, maybe a light bulb in the room. Of course, I can right click on this and I can make it active. And I can obviously delete things. So what I'll do, I think I'm going to delete everything apart from the sunlight. I'm going to delete that. And I'm going to delete that. So we're keeping things simple to begin with. I've just basically got this sunlight. So it's called a directional light. It will shine wherever we tell it. We're going to be able to control the light of it, the illumination. We're also going to be able to control the shadows that it creates. So first of all, what I'm going to do, I'm going to actually tell it to aim at something and I'm going to set a target. So I click on this light, I click on the target button, I'm just going to press a surface or an object. So tip of the engine there. And now I'm going to control the position of it. So right now, that's the light there. And I can move it in different directions. Ideally, what I'd like to happen here is to have the sunlight shining through the window at the engine. What I probably need to do is to pull that over to there. You can see it's now shining through the window. We pull that a bit more. So hopefully I've now got this light shining through the window in the direction of the engine. It's going to tell it the target. Target should be there. So I'm now in the position to actually create what's called a rendering. What I'll do is I'll just go back to camera one, I'll set the view to the camera, I'm now going to go to render image, I'm just going to change the aspect ratio to the minimum I'm going to make sure I've got the current view, which is the camera. I've got the demo lighting style that I've set up and I've got the current black background. I'm just going to press render and this will create a still image for me.